Yo, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Now that we finally got to the end of the Grand Masters, that we have done all of them countless times, this is without a doubt the best build that you can pretty much take into any Grand Master and the well with. So if you're still missing a couple of Grand Masters you haven't done, or you're still trying to grind some weapons, then this is the build that you want to run because it's just the best one you could possibly run this season. And the great thing about this build is that it uses very common weapons. It's probably something you already use or have in the vault somewhere. But anyways, let's get into it. And first, let's talk about the weapons. And well, there's a lot of different like good and temporary weapons this season. The best one definitely has to be the Albert Perfected. This thing is fantastic at dealing with barriers and also at dealing with pretty much anything else that the uh, Grandmasters throw at you. And if you slap on uh, some rewind rounds on this thing, then you can pretty much solo barriers without having to reload, while at the same time getting an insane amount of like super energy and also transcendence energy. So not only is it really good at doing what we wanted to do, which is kill barriers, but it's also going to give us a ton of use energy for our abilities so we can spam them more often. With this and a good like uh, class item, you can pretty much just spam supers a lot and I really do mean a lot of the time. And that's without mentioning that the weapon gets better as just more people in your fire team equip it. So if you have a couple of these against some very champions, they're not going to be a problem at all. You actually can even damage some of the bosses uh, in the Grandmasters. So that upper perfected is like the perfect anti-barrier weapon. So if you're looking for a good anti-barrier pulse rifle, then this is going to be pretty much as good as it gets. Now for a second weapon, I like to run the Outbreak with one of the special sidearms, and I just gotta go with the Aberrant Action. This one not only is it easy to get, but it's also craftable so you can get your perfect god rule. And I just went for the classic, the Incandescent Plus Heal Clip, so we can get a bit more at clear, and also some survivability as well, while still getting all that damage that we get from the special sidearms. So this is gonna be our go-to unstoppable weapon for whenever we need it. Now for the super, I would say that Silence and Skull has been my favorite this season. It can freeze, it can slow, meaning that it can stun overloads and unstoppables just by itself. And if you throw this thing at a champion, that pretty much marks it for death. They're not going to survive the Silence and Skull. It's going to be really good. I know the really good one is also the Tether, the Shadow Shot. It is fantastic for ad clear, And both of these work really well with the Super Region Exotics. I mean that with both of these you're gonna get like 50% of your super back usually if you're using a class item or in the third case the Orpheus Raids. Now for the melee and the grenade I think the stasis ones are probably the best ones the dust field and the withering blade. Overall I think that these are like the most well-rounded abilities and being able to freeze and slow is also really good because it gives you the ability to stun two champions with your abilities. Now, if you need a certain grenade for a build or something like that, that's like the only time where I would switch out of these. But most of the time, I just keep these on. They're always just really good. And even if you're not dealing with a champion and you don't need to stun them, just being able to slow and freeze targets, it is just such a strong ability in PvE that they're amazing. Now, moving on to the aspects, the very first one we gotta talk about is Ascension. This lets us draw targets very easily as well as become amplified every couple of seconds. And that's really good since we have Galvanic Armor this season, meaning that every time we're amplified, we're going to be taking less damage. I expect 35% damage resistance. So as long as we keep spamming Ascension and we're just always amplified, we're always going to be more tanky and just take less damage. And the second aspect has to be a Stylist Executioner. The ability to go invisible is just so strong. It has a lot of survivability. And we have used so many different things on the kit that can proc the stylist executioner. From just hitting something with our melee, grenade, even just our sidearm. Just hitting something with our scorch and then killing that thing will make us invisible. So we have lots of different ways to go invisible. And the invisibility is just OP in PvE. For saving the teammate, for staying alive, you can always use the invisibility. Now moving on to the fragments, the very first one is the facet of grace. Uh, whenever you defeat targets with a kinetic weapon, it gives you bonus transcendence energy. And whenever we defeat targets with our super, it'll give our allies bonus transcendence energy. This is to get more transcendence energy from the outbreak, and it's also the reason why I like silence and school more than tether, 
since Silas and Skull can actually get final blows, defeat targets, and thus give our allies some of that bonus energy. After that we have faster protection, this one's just good to have in any like difficult activity, since whenever you're surrounded, you're gonna be able to take more damage. And if you pop your transcendence, it gives you an even bigger damage resistance. Next up we have the Facet of Dawn, this is gonna give us Radiant whenever we hit something with our power melee, and since we get two of them, this is something that we can use very often, especially if we pop our transcendence. We just throw them all over the place, we're always radiant, we always have that 20% damage increase, and our weapons just feel better with that damage increase. If you think the Outbreak or the Sidearm are already good, just at their base form, when you have radiant, they just do some ridiculous amounts of damage. It is fantastic, and we can keep it up pretty much a lot of the time. After that, we're going to have the Facet of Solitude, which is going to sever targets whenever we land some rapid precision hits on them. This is going to do a couple of different things. Uh, the big one is that it lowers the damage of whatever you're shooting. So if you're shooting at a champion, uh, it's going to lower their damage, so they're less likely to kill us. And also, whenever we defeat that target, we're going to go invisible, since it does count as them being affected by a debuff, so it will immediately use proc our invisibility. And you can proc this pretty easily on the outbreak, not only on champions, but on like medium enemies, you'll be able to proc this and take advantage of the lower damage and also the invisibility. And the last fragment is going to be the Facet of Hope, and this is the reason that we can spam Ascendance as much as we do with this build, since whenever you have an elemental buff, your class ability recharges more quickly. And since Amplified is an elemental buff, every time we use our class ability, we're going to get increased class ability regen, to the point that we can pretty much get our class ability before our Amplified is up, meaning that we just keep getting Amplified over and over again, and we are never without Amplified, unless you forget to actually like use the Ascendance, which does happen. <laughs> now for the Exotic Armor, I've just pretty much been using my class item this season. That class item with the Spirit of Galanor plus Silence and Squall will get you really far. <laughs> it will get you really far in pretty much any GM, uh, you basically always get 50% back on your super, and then you get the rest of the super back with your outbreak perfected. So you, then you can spam another super, and you're basically just going from place to place spamming supers. It is fantastic. So I just kind of hope that you guys have a Spirit of Galanor Cloak in the vault. That's pretty much like the only thing you need. The other perk can pretty much be whatever you want, and it'll be pretty good. Uh, with this one, I get woven mail whenever I use my grenades as well. Which is pretty good, since we have a lot of grenades, uh, since we spam uh, Transcendence quite a bit. So I actually get a lot of value out of this uh, perk as well. But if we don't have this, that's okay. As long as we have Galnor, you'll be able to do this. Now the last thing I want to talk about is going to be the artifact. I feel like this season was actually really good when it came to the artifact. Not only with like the base artifact mods, but also with the other ones we got through the axe. I feel like they've all been pretty good. And the best ones for sure that I ended up really loving were uh, Shield Crush and Chinsferens. They work really well with that build. Of course, Galvanic Armor. Galvanic Armor was part of so many of my builds this season. It was insane. Uh, Solar Illumination was pretty good for whenever you did something with Arc. Uh, this over here, Counter Energy, was also really good. So was Radiant Orbs. A lot of these um, mods are pretty much good in every build. Elemental Siphon is another one that you can just slap on in the build and make it pretty good. Then you have things like Sniper's Meditation, Incendiary Rounds, whenever you run like a Barrier Sniper, that was also really good. Shock and Awe actually work really well with Ascendance, believe it or not. Every time like you activate your Ascendance, it essentially just guarantees that a Arc Strike hits and then hits even more things. And it actually made Ascendance into like a very good ad clearing machine. Like Shock and All plus Galvanic Armor were a really good combination. But the ones that I had to use the most and the ones that I would recommend with this build would definitely be Shield Crush Transference. They give you so much just region. And then whenever you're in your Transcendence with Transference, you get increased melee and grenade damage. And you definitely feel that it's trying to increase like melee and uh, grenade damage, especially when like, you're fighting champions, you chug them with your melees, which is not something you usually do with that melee. That melee usually doesn't do too much damage, but it actually does put in quite a bit of damage thanks to transference, and shield crush is just good. 
and you just get your abilities back faster. But with that, that's going to be the whole build. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different than the other uh, build videos we posted about. It's a little bit less uh, organized. <laughs> but I want this one to be a little bit more laid back. As I just kind of talk about things that I really like this season. Not only were we talking about like what I think was the best weapon and abilities this season. But just things that I liked. You know, especially here at the artifact at the end. I pretty much just started mentioning <laughs> all the good mods that I ended up using. Because that was like the type of video that it was supposed to be. It kind of maybe went a little bit too far into the build aspect of it. But it, it was originally supposed to be just me going over the things that I really liked this season. Uh, that made this build just so good in the GMs. If you really wanted to, you could slap on this build and knock out every single one of the GMs without having to change a thing. I truly do think that it's actually that good and you wouldn't run into any problems. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of video. Uh, leave it like you did, just like you didn't, subscribe to the channel in case you guys haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.